day 29 of commit, we're going to be strengthening and stretching our glutes. Feel free to pause the video if you want to hold any of the stretches for a little bit longer. Please like and subscribe and stick around to the end of the video for a breakdown of a pose from today's practice. Let's begin facing the long edge of our mat in mountain pose, arms at your sides. Begin to march one leg up, then the other, taking your knee up as high as you can with control, moving at your own pace. On your next one, start to bring the knee up and out. Continue alternating sides. Bring it down, step your feet just beyond shoulder width apart, hands on your hips. Begin to draw hip circles, moving in one direction. And let's reverse that direction, hip circles the opposite way. To center, step your feet to hip distance apart. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold, bending the knees as much as you like to a ragdoll position, allowing the upper body to get heavy as we bow the head. You can hug at the elbows and sway a little from side to side. On your next inhale to a half lift, flat back. Exhale down. Inhale to upward salute. Exhale, hands to heart. Draw the right knee to chest and hold. Releasing with control, let's do that on the left side. and release. Taking your hands together at heart center. Let's slide the right foot cross back behind the left to a curtsy lunge. Hands can remain at heart center or you can play around here making shapes. Returning to center, let's repeat that on the opposite side, sliding the left foot cross back. Keeping your hands together at your heart or playing around and making shapes. Take your time returning to center. Shift your weight to the left side, pick up the right foot and extend it to the right in a big toe hold pose. Left arm out to the side to counterbalance. Release with control. Let's repeat that on the left side. And 
and release. Shimmy your feet out to a wide stance, toes pointing out to the corners of your mat. Inhale, arms up to goddess pulses, exhale, lower, cactus arms. We have six. Coming up, five more. Four. Three. Two. And on this last one, we're gonna hold in goddess pose. And release to standing. Arms come down, shimmy the feet in to shoulder distance apart, toes turned out, let's lower the hips to a garland pose, hands together at your heart, arms pressing into the knees to widen your stretch. Get long through the back and neck, shoulders down and away from the ears. With our hands down ahead of us, we're gonna lift and lower the hips in our garland pose. Hands down ahead of you, raise the hips six times. Lower down, up for five, four, three, two, last one. Shift to a kneeling position. Sending the right leg out to the side in a gate pose, but remaining upright. Arms extend ahead of us in Kali Mudra at shoulder height. Let's lower and lift the hips six times. Coming down, back up. Five. Four. Three. Two. Last one. Bring the right leg back in. Send the left leg out to the side. Lower the hips. Back up. Five more. Four. Three. Two. Last one. Bring the left leg back in. Let's shift back onto our toes in a toe stand. Heels lifted. Your hands can stay down on the mat for support, or you can take them together in Anjali Mudra. Keeping your heels raised, slowly make your way back up to standing. Release your hands and shimmy your feet out to a wide stance, toes pointing to the long edge of your mat. Lower to a side lunge on the right side. Back up to the left. Five more times on each side. If you want to challenge yourself for the last few, you can stay low clasping your hands ahead of you shifting from side to side. Last one. Return to standing. Rotate to the right side, arms up in a crescent lunge. Float the right knee up as we lower the arms and send it back to crescent lunge. Let's do that two more times. One more. Float the back foot and hinge to a warrior three pose. Releasing warrior three to mountain. Hands to heart. Step your opposite foot back to a crescent lunge. Float the back leg to knee up, lowering the arms, and back to crescent lunge. Let's do two more. And last one. From crescent lunge, float the back leg, coming to a warrior three pose.
Releasing Warrior 3 to Mountain Pose. Hands to heart. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Plant the palms. Step the legs back to plank. Then lower the knees to a tabletop position. Extend the right leg straight back at hip height, pointing the toes. Let's lower and lift the leg for six, five, four, three, two, and one. Stay up, bend the knee, pointing the toes up, tapping up for six, five, four, three, two, and one. Keep the core tight, swing that leg down, keeping the knee bent, and up for six, five, four, three more, last two, and one. Keep the knee floated as we come down, out to the side for six, five, four, three, two, and one. Lower the knee down. Let's extend that left leg at hip height, lower and lift for six, five, four, three, two, last one. Stay up, bend the knee, and tapping up for six, five, four, three, two, one. Keep the core tight, swinging the leg down and up for six, five, four, three, two, and one. Keep the knee floated, send it out to the side for six, five, four, three, two, and one. Lower the knee down. Slide that right foot back, pointing the toes. Send it off the left edge of your mat. Rainbow it over to the right side. Two more times on each side. Last one. Bring it back to the left and gaze over your left shoulder towards the foot, opening up through the right side body. and release, returning to table. Slide the left leg straight back, rainbow right to left three times. Two, last one. Off to the right side now, gazing over your right shoulder, opening up through the left side body. And release, returning to table. Stepping one foot back, then the other, to a plank pose. Let's keep the right hand down and open up to side plank, twisting to the left. Staying here, or raising that top leg to a star position. Stepping it back, side bend to wild thing. Return to plank, open up to side plank with the left hand down, right arm reaches up. Staying here or raising that top leg to a star position. Stepping it back to wild thing. returning to plank. Carefully lower your knees and press back to child's pose. Hips over heels get wide through the sit bones. Coming up through table, draw the right knee forward to a pigeon pose. Toes of the extended leg are pointing straight back. Square the hips off to your mat. Get long through the back. You can stay here or fold over that front leg.
Coming out of pigeon, press to a downward facing dog. Draw the left leg forward to pigeon on the opposite side. Pressing back through table, make your way down onto your belly, arms at your sides, palms facing up. Big inhale, lifting the legs, chest and arms to locust pose, pointing strongly through the toes, gazing forward. Lower down and press back to child's pose. Coming out of child's pose, make your way down onto your back with your knees bent up, feet hip width apart. Raising the hips to bridge pose, draw the chest up, shoulder blades together as you clasp your hands beneath you. Deepen your breath as we hold for about 30 seconds more. Release your hands and slowly lower all the way back down to the mat. Cross your right leg over left, drawing the left leg in to a reclined pigeon pose. Release, taking left leg over right, drawing the right leg in. Release both feet down to the mat, drawing your knees together and stepping the feet out wide, hands on your belly, take a few deep breaths here to finish up.
let's talk about bridge pose. In this pose, we're stretching the neck, the back, and the chest, and we're strengthening the legs, the hips, the glutes, the lower back, and the abdomen. So, coming down onto our backs now. We're gonna place our feet hip distance apart, and we're gonna keep our knees hip distance apart as well, going into this pose. So, before we lift the hips up, what we wanna do, arms down at our sides, palms down, what we wanna do is tuck that pelvis under, and we're gonna lead with the tailbone, and that's where the lift is going to start from. Now, you can bring your heels as close to your hips as you can while comfortably keeping them down. Good, so tucking the tailbone under, we begin to lift, and we're keeping those knees hip distance apart. And what's happening as we come into the lift is we want to engage the inner thigh muscles, our adductors. So that's where we're gonna start. So engaging there, and then we squeeze the glutes. So continue to tighten in the inner thighs, continue to tighten the glutes. And we want to engage them, but we don't want, we don't want them to be like so, so, so tight. Okay, so we're just holding gently. Just enough to keep us up in this position. So once we're up here, we're gonna lift the chest. So imagine a string is pulling your chest up towards your chin. And we're long through the back of the neck, let's remember that. And then once we're here, we're gonna clasp our hands beneath our pelvis here, beneath our hips. But before we do that, we're gonna shimmy those shoulder blades closer together. So drawing them closer together, opening up the chest even more. And here we are. And so you might notice some fatigue in your glutes or in the legs, and that's okay. Just try to shift where you're engaging so that you can up high here. So if you're squeezing really, really, really hard, and the reason why we don't want to do that is because you're going to fatigue a little bit too quickly in this pose. So we really want to be able to hold it for a lot longer. We just want to engage enough to keep those hips up, maintaining proper alignment. So to release, obviously, we're going to release the shoulders first, arms down at our sides. We're going to roll down starting from the upper back. Still tucking that tailbone under as we come down. And then we bring the pelvis back to a neutral position. So if that's something that's really, really easy for you, and you don't really feel any strengthening or stretching happening at all, you can take your heels further away from your hips. So the further your heels are from your hips, the more difficult holding a bridge is going to be. So can you have here. And now to modify, if you need to make that lift a little bit easier, you can bring your feet a little bit wider. Keep them close to your heels, but bring them a little bit wider and you'll find a lot more stability. But when we come wider, we're gonna bring our knees over our ankles. Good. So that's a little bit easier to hold. And there's a lot of variations that we can work in a bridge pose, depending on what kind of muscles we wanna go into. But for yoga, that's our basic alignment and that's what we're guiding you into when you're going through a yoga flow. So something that you can do if you want to work on isolations, we can come up into our bridge pose and if this is if you're incorporating this into your personal practice, you can isolate just one side, squeezing just the right cheek and then the left cheek. Squeezing a little bit harder and releasing the opposite. And this will give you a little bit more body awareness and a lot more balance in single leg standing balance poses. So coming back down. Now, if it's in the upper body here that you find this difficult, there's two things that you can do. First, notice if you're pressing through the shoulders. So we shouldn't be pressing through the shoulders at all to keep our hips up. But that's something that's a common mistake that we make in this pose. We should be relaxed up here, okay? And this, even when we're coming into this position here, once we're in, we just rest here. We're just opening up. There shouldn't be any tension up here. Okay, but if we're pressing through the shoulders and we find that painful, try to relax the shoulders and bring all that engagement down here, for all that good stuff. 
But if you have shoulder pain or neck pain and you're not tensing and it still hurts, something you can do is get a thick blanket, towel, a cushion, or a bolster and position it beneath your shoulders here. That way, when we lift up, you have the back of the head still touches down on the mat, but we have a ton of support up here and it's a lot easier on the upper body. You can still clasp if you want to, or you can just keep your arms down and just try to relax the upper body. And you're still gonna get a stretch through the neck, still gonna get a stretch through the back here and the chest. And we're still strengthening here. We're just relieving some of that pressure from the neck and the shoulders. When done well, bridge pose can be really calming and relaxing, so it's definitely a pose that's worth getting used to. If you're incorporating it into your personal practice, hold it anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute.